So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a digital library that you can access for free anytime and anywhere? You don't have to look far. Serpy is here for you. Serpy is an online database of socioeconomic materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Government agencies, research and academic institutions, and international organizations based in the Philippines. It is the country's first online repository of socioeconomic information. Created for policymakers and development practitioners, researchers, educators, and students. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website and click the SERPI widget. Or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI has a wide variety of materials such as journal articles, books, research papers, working papers, policy notes, audiovisual materials, and more. As of 2021, SERPI has more than 50 partner institutions contributing knowledge resources to the database. SERPI provides a comprehensive coverage of references encompassing 22 research themes, labor and education, gender and development, poverty, technology and innovation, trade and industry, and many more. You can search by keyword or author, publication type, research theme, or year published. Turkey has more than 7,000 publications and audiovisual materials that you can access and download for free. What are you waiting for? Visit Turkey now. Social Economic Research Portal for the Philippines, Innovating Knowledge Exchange and Policy Research. Dapat po munang alamin or matukoy ang pangunahing problema ng bansa upang mapagtuunan ng pansin at mabigyan ng solusyon. We should have a specific goals, um, do research, and make a policy that is fair for everyone. Walang problema sa polisiya. Iayos lang ang pagpapatupad. Bago patubas ang batas, pag-aralan mo na gusto ng government. Two things, clarity and execution. Both, you need the communication, and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. As simple as that. Mandato ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies, o PIDS, na gumawa ng mga pag-aaral at pananaliksik ng mga pulisiya at programa ng pamalaan at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas sa pagbabalangkas ng mga pulisiyang makakatulong sa ating bansa. 
sinusulo ng aming ahensya ang evidence-based policy making ipang bigyan din ng kalagahan ng polisiya na batay sa datos at policy research na sumusuri sa tunay na kalagayan ng ating mga komunidad. Napakalaga ng policy research, lalo na sa mga panahong dumadaan sa krisis ang ating bansa. Kapag polisiya ay piyagaralan, susulong ang bayan! So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research References for your research? Do you want a digital library that you can access for free anytime and anywhere? You don't have to look far. Serpkey is here for you. Serpkey is an online database of socioeconomic materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Government agencies, research and academic institutions, and international organizations based in the Philippines. It is the country's first online repository of socioeconomic information, created for policymakers and development practitioners, researchers, educators, and students. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website and click the SERPI widget, or type surf-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI has a wide variety of materials such as journal articles, books, research papers, working papers, policy notes, audiovisual materials, and more. As of 2021, SERPI has more than 50 partner institutions contributing knowledge resources to the database. SERPI provides a comprehensive coverage of references encompassing 22 research themes, labor and education, gender and development, poverty, technology and innovation, trade and industry, and many more. You can search by keyword or author, publication type, research theme, or year published. Turkey has more than 7,000 publications and audiovisual materials that you can access and download for free. What are you waiting for? Visit Turkey now. Socioeconomic Research Portal for the Philippines, Innovating Knowledge Exchange and Policy Research. Dapat po munang alamin or matukoy ang pangunahing problema ng bansa upang mapagtuunan ng pansin at mabigyan ng solusyon. We should have a specific goals, um, do research, and make a policy that is fair for everyone. Walang problema sa polisiya. Iayos lang ang pagpapatupad. Bago patubas ang batas, pag-aralan muna gusto ng government. Two things. 
clarity and execution. Both, you need the communication and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. As simple as that. Mandato ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies o PIDS na gumawa ng mga pag-aaral at pananaliksik ng mga pulisiya at programa ng pamalaan at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas sa pagbabalangkas ng mga pulisiyang makakatulong sa ating bansa. Sinusulong ng aming ahensya ang evidence-based policy making upang bigyan din ng kalaghan ng pulisiya na batay sa datos at policy research na sumusuri sa tunay na kalagayan ng ating mga komunidad. Napakalaga ng policy research, lalo na sa mga panahong dumadaan sa krisis ang ating bansa. Kapag pulisiya ay pinag-aralan, susulong ang bayan! Welcome to the PIDS webinar series. Before we start the webinar, we would like to give you a few reminders. For attendees, your microphone is muted upon entry. In case you have a question, the moderator will read it during the open forum. For those attending via Cisco WebEx, use the chat box located at the lower part of the screen. Click the chat icon, type your name and affiliation, and your question, and send to all panelists. You may send your questions while the presentation is in progress. The moderator will read them during the open forum. For Facebook viewers, at least two questions from the comment section will be read by the moderator during the open forum. We will moderate all questions to ensure that they are relevant to the scope of the presentation. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to your active participation. everyone and welcome to the PIDS webinar series where we discuss development issues based on data and evidence. We trust that all of you are safe and in good health. I am Sheila CR of PIDS and I will be your moderator. The Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program, better known as 4Ps, is the country's flagship social assistance program that aims to fight intergenerational poverty by investing in human capital. An important aspect of the four Ps is the grant itself, particularly its perceived adequacy, the timeliness of receipt, and the frequency and mode of the grant's delivery. This afternoon, we will discuss how the four Ps is faring in this aspect and what can be done to improve the program's uh, payment system. 
To officially open our event, I now give the floor to our president at PIDS, Dr. Aniceto Orbeta Jr. Thanks, Sheila. Uh, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of the following who choose to share their valuable time with us this afternoon. From the government, uh, we have Department of Agriculture. Agrarian Reform under Secretary Virginia Orugo, House of Representative Congressional Policy and Budget Research Department Director General Romulo Mirar, House of Representatives Director Tina Pasigi, Senate Economic Planning Office Executive Director Mervin Salazar, Philippine Statistical Research and Training Institute Executive Director Josefina Almeida, Operative Development Authority Executive Director Ray Ilevaso, Department of Foreign Affairs Directors Ivan uh, Frank Olea and Cassandra Sawadhan, Bureau of Local Government Finance Director Maria Pamela Quezon, uh, Department of Social Welfare and Development Program and Management Bureau, OIC Assistant Bureau Director for Programs, Maricel Deloria. From the private sector, we have Golden Press Chief Executive Officer Maria Belen Lim, uh, CPRM Consultants Incorporated Director Christine Racho. From the Academy, let me acknowledge the following University of San Carlos President Narciso Silian, University of the Philippines Verata School of Economics Dean Joel Tantores, Ateneo de Manila School of Government Dean Ronald Mendoza, Tarlac Agricultural University Dean. Maria Teresa Nardo, Okidon State University Dean Lorenzo Inlayan, University of Southern Mindanao Director Yvonne Saliling, Northern Iloilo Polytechnic State College Batad Campus Associate Director Eva Montero. From the CSOs, NGOs, and INGOs, we have uh, World Bank Social Protection Specialist Yasuhiro Kawasui and Roth Rodriguez, World Bank Consultant Larne Revilla. Asian Development Bank Principal Social Development Specialist Yukiko Ito, ADB Public Management Specialist Ku Nagata, ADB Consultants Cliff Berkeley and Dines Arroyo, Foundations for Economic President Calexto Chikyamku. Let me also greet our, our friends from the media. Finally, let me also greet our guests, colleagues from government, academics, civil society, media, and private sector, as well as those who are watching through the PIDS and SERPI uh, Facebook pages. Today, our main presenter, PIDS Supervising Research Specialist Chris Ann Millad, will discuss a study we conducted together with former research analyst Nina Victoria Rouse. In particular, we'll be sharing res the results of the assessment we did on the payment system of the Pantawid Familia Filipino Program, or Four Peace. Four Peace is the government's flagship social protection program, the implementation of which is spearheaded by the Department of Social Welfare, or DSWD. The study looked into the amount, frequency, and mode of payment delivery of the cash transfers of Four Peace. As most of us know, the Four Peace was institutionalized in April 17, 2019 under Republic Act 11310. The law has tasked PIDS to conduct periodic assessments of the program and recommend adjustments in the amount of the cash grants provided to the beneficiaries every six years. This study is an early attempt of the Institute to examine and recommend improvements in the payment system of the four P's. With the passing of the law, the health grants increased from 500 to 750, while the education grant for children in senior high school increased from 500 to 700. Meanwhile, uh, grants from the elementary and junior high school remained at 300 pesos and 500 pesos respectively. The, all, the law also states that the program beneficiaries are covered only for a maximum of seven years. During this period, there will be a mutual intervention plan to support their compliance with the program conditions and for them to have an improved well-being. Compliant beneficiaries receives cash grants on a bi-monthly basis. 
regarding the mode of payment delivery, the DSWD has started pursuing complete conversion of the payment method to an AMV enabled cash cards in 2019. Instead of receiving their cash cards through direct payout or house to house distribution, program beneficiaries currently receive cash grants through cash cards. The shift allow faster obligation and crediting of cash grants to the beneficiaries. In general, the program payments has improved despite the gaps in the initial years of its implementation. However, the research team found some issues that still need action to facilitate smoother transaction in receiving cash grants. My co-author and presenter, Ms. Milad, will present the specific results of the assessment and our recommendations to address the issues. We will also hear the insights and comments of colleagues from other sectors. This afternoon, we have DSWD Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation Division, OIC Division Chief, Mr. Jimmy Francis Rank, and Banco Central ng Pilipinas Economic and Financial Learning Office Acting Deputy Director, Ms. Sara Padilla. I want to thank Mr. Rank and Director Padilla for accepting our invitation. It's an honor to have you at this event. To our viewers, I hope you will stay until the end of the webinar and actively participate during the open forum. I now give back the floor to the administrator. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abeta. Okay, before I give the virtual floor to our presenter, allow me to reiterate our house rules for those who are joining us the first time or who missed the recording uh, before we started the webinar. So to join the open forum, just use the chat box, which is located at the lower part of the WebEx screen. So just type your name and affiliation and your question and send it to all panelists or to everyone and not to a particular person. And I will read your questions during the open forum. And since we have limited time, please make your questions concise. Okay. For our viewers on Facebook, malaya rin po kayong uh, makajoin sa ating uh, open forum, sa ating discussion. So just use the comment section, just type your question there, and I will read up to two questions during the open forum. Okay, so uh, for all speakers, kindly observe the time limit. We are giving our presenter up to 30 minutes and each discussant up to 15 minutes. Okay, so at this point, I now invite all the all of you to pay attention to um, our featured study for this webinar, which is authored by our president, uh, Dr. Aniceto Orbeta, Jr., together with Ms. Chris Ann Melad and Ms. Nina Araos. And to present the study is uh, Ms. Chris Ann Melad, or CAM as we call her at PIDS. CAM is a supervising uh, research specialist, and uh, she obtained her master's degree in development economics from the University of the Philippines School of Economics. Her current uh, research involvements are in the areas of social protection, human capital development, and program evaluation. Cam, the virtual floor is now yours. Thank you very much, Ma'am Sheila, for, for the introduction. Um, good afternoon to everyone who are watching um, via WebEx and joining us via Facebook. Good afternoon also to our discussants, uh, Mr. Uh, Jimmy Shook from the SWD and Ms. Padilla of the Baco Central ng Pilipinas. Uh, so this afternoon, I will be presenting our study titled uh, Giving Cash to the Poor, a study of Pantawid Familia Cash Grants generosity, frequency, and modality. Our research team uh, includes myself, uh, Dr. Orbeta, and uh, our former research analyst, Ms. Nina Araos. Uh, for my presentation, uh, I will be following this outline. Uh, we will briefly um, discuss the background and objective of the research, followed by a brief discussion of the design and methodology, uh, and then the results. And finally, to end the presentation, I will try to um, summarize the results and give the corresponding recommendations for each of the results. Okay, so to start, um, uh, this was already mentioned by Dr. Orbeta earlier in his um, speech, uh, but the research is an early attempt of the Institute to examine the uh, four-piece program implementation. Um, 
This is uh, in light of the enactment of RA 11310, which institutionalized the program. Um, in particular, this study looks at three aspects of the program implementation, particularly its payment system. So the three aspects uh, that we have looked at uh, include, uh, first, uh, the benefit level or the amount of cash transfers that the beneficiaries received. And then the second one is the frequency or how often the beneficiaries receive their cash grants. And then the last aspect is the mode of payment delivery or the manner through which the beneficiaries uh, receive and access their cash grants. So this slide um, shows the conceptual framework that we followed in the study. Uh, what is shown here is the pathway through which the program is trying to achieve its desired outcomes. Um, as mentioned earlier by Ms. Sheila and uh, Dr. Urbeta, the program goal is to break the intergenerational tra uh, transfer of poverty. Um, but uh, what is uh, unique in this um, uh, diagram is that we include the three aspects of the payment system that the research study is trying to examine uh, and show its role in the achievement of these desired outcomes of the program. So. Uh, in terms of generosity, uh, if the benefit levels are high enough, uh, we assume that it is able to encourage compliance to conditions and also augment the income of the household beneficiaries. Um, if the grants are provided at appropriate frequencies, um, they are available to the beneficiaries when they need, when they need the grants, and also their saving constraints are relaxed. And lastly, um, if the grants are uh, delivered, with minimum cost to the beneficiaries, uh, the higher is the likelihood for the desired outcomes of the program to be achieved. So for the research design, there are four components. Uh, the first one is the desk review of literature and administrative data. This includes the year review of the data of the uh, program implementers, as well as the issuances that the uh, program is uh, following, the policy guidelines and uh, memorandums that uh, the program implementers have issued. Um, the second component is uh, the primary data collection that our research team did. We conducted key informant interviews and focus group discussions among um, program implementers and program beneficiaries. Uh, the third component uh, looked into the um, difference in the magnitude of impact of the program um, based on the mode of payment that uh, the uh, that the beneficiaries are a part of. And then the fourth component, which is the online survey of the SAP implementation, was a lot was a, um, an addition to the uh, research project toward uh, the latter end of the uh, research, where we wanted to collect insights and experience from the beneficiaries regarding uh, their experience in the receipt of the social amelioration um, program financial assistance, which we believe um, uh, shows how well the payment system of the uh, of the program functions. Okay, so this is just um, the list of uh, the uh, study sites uh, for the primary data collection that the research team did. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we did focus group discussions. So we have identified 16 barangays uh, from the third impact evaluation study sites. Um, and for each barangay, we conducted one focus group discussion. Uh, this is uh, among the beneficiaries. And we made sure to choose at least one urban and one rural barangay for, for um, uh, one city or municipality. And we also did key informant interviews from uh, uh, with the program implementers. So we did KIIs with uh, the frontline staff of the program. Um, they are the municipal links as well as the municipal roving bookkeepers assigned in the study sites where we conducted the FGDs. And we also did uh, interviews with the national level program implementers. So that includes the National Program Management Office and the financial um, unit of DSWD in charge with the program um, payment. Uh, lastly, we also did AKII with representatives of the Land Bank of the Philippines.
Okay. Uh, to explain what we did with the uh, uh, um, third wave impact evaluation data, um, basically what the research team um, did is to compare the magnitude of impact of the program um, on subsets of beneficiaries that we grouped according to their cash grant modality. So we compare the program impact on uh, subsets of uh, beneficiaries. Uh, the first subset is the group that uh, received their cash grants through over-the-counter transactions, while the other group uh, receive uh, their cash grants through the uh, cash cards or ATM cards. So, yeah. Okay, for the final component of the research design, uh, uh, this slide shows uh, the online survey that we did to collect the information on the SAP among the four piece beneficiaries. The survey was launched in April uh, last year. Um, majority of the responses we collected uh, were um, collected from April to May 2020. Um, if, you, uh, if you can recall, this was the time when the um, enhanced community quarantine was still in place in uh, Luzon. So in total, there were um, 886 respondents that we used in the analysis. And uh, since the survey was launched online, a uh, majority of the responses were from um, NCR and uh, urban areas. So just to put the, the results later in context. Okay, so speaking of results, uh, I will be now discussing uh, the observations that our research team found in the study. Um, for, uh, for the presentation of the results, we will also follow the three aspects uh, that we looked at. So we first go to the benefit level and then we will proceed with the discussion for the observations on frequency as well as modality. Okay, so to begin our, our results for the benefit level, um, we also, our research team looked at the um, available international evidence on the um, impact of CCTs depending on the size of the cash transfer. So generally what the evidence is telling us is that larger cash transfers are associated with bigger impacts in um, household expenditure and poverty reduction. We also um, noted evidence on improvement in um, uh, health outcomes, uh, particularly better health uh, height for age among children and frequent health center visits. We also observed evidence on uh, increased savings and investments for CCTs with higher um, transfer levels. Uh, however, for education, the evidence is more mixed. Um, there are evidence that suggests positive impact uh, associated with higher transfer, while there are also um, uh, evidence that show no impact or even reduction in desired outcomes. What this uh, slide shows now is the history of the cash grant amount uh, per month through the years in the four Ps. So as, as most of us know, 2008 was the year when the program was started. So what you can see here is that from 2008 up to the middle of 2014, the amount of cash grants remained at their nominal value of 500 for health and 300 per child for education, regardless of the education level of the child. Um, there was a slight increase in mid-2014 where the education grant uh, was uh, divided to two types. We now have the 500 per child in um, secondary. And then uh, in 2017, following the state of the uh, nation address of President Duterte, uh, an additional subsidy was given to the four piece beneficiaries. We now have the rice subsidy, which is 600 per household. The more, uh, the most recent increase in the cash grants happened in 2020, uh, following the enactment of RA 11310, where the health uh, grant was increased to 750. And we now have a third type of education grant, which is uh, uh, 700 per child in uh, senior high school. So what I'm trying to show here is that from 2008 up to uh, 2014, the nominal values of the grant remained the same. 
And there was only very slight increase up to 2016. And the more significant increase happened only in 2017 and 2020. This is more clearly illustrated in the graph on the left, where we show that from 2008 up to 2017, there has been a 5% reduction, a 5 percentage point reduction in uh, the share of the real value of the grants over the uh, 2006 poverty threshold, um, which was the threshold used during the targeting of eligibility uh, of the Forbes beneficiaries during the uh, first round of listahan. Um, the graph on the, uh, on the, the right uh, is from a study by Acosta and Velarde, which shows the international comparison of the CCTs uh, of the four Ps versus other CCTs, where it shows that um, the generosity of the program is actually in the bottom 20%. Okay. During the FGDs, we asked the beneficiaries how they spend the cash grants that they receive from the program. And as you can see here in the word cloud, it's very clear that according to the beneficiaries, uh, most of the cash grants is spent on uh, is spent on school expenses of the children. Uh, the next categories of expenditure are usually food and health expenditures in the form of vitamins. Now, during the uh, focus group discussions, we asked the beneficiaries what their opinion is on the generosity of the of the program. Um, we asked them what they think would be the optimum cash grant amount and whether the cash grant uh, amounts that they are currently experiencing are, su are sufficient to um, address uh, their constraints in spending. Um, so in general, um, even though the respondents reported that their household budget is not enough, or they're still struggling to cover their expenses, expenses um, most are reluctant to suggest an optimal cash grant amount because um, they are happy with whatever amount that the government chooses to give them and also they note that um, funding could also go to other programs uh, for others who are also in need. Um, they also, uh, some of the beneficiaries that we talked to also cited that there is also, uh, there is already an increase due to the uh, Republic Act 11310 and they are already satisfied with the amounts under the law. Of the, uh, of the few who said that they would want to um, have the cash grants increase, they cited the reason of having the need to cover the cost of rising prices. Um, this is consistent with the opinion also of the program implementers. Um, they said that any increase in cash, cash grant amount would be beneficial for the beneficiaries. And they also said that um, because of the prices of food and other commodities that has been increasing in the past years, um, there may be a need to uh, to look at the um, level of the cash grant amounts received by the beneficiaries. For the frequency, um, the international evidence is more mixed uh, compared to the uh, size of cash transfers. Um, what is um, evident, however, is that uh, more frequent transfers usually uh, result in consumption smoothing, while lump sum or less frequent production of cash grants are more um, associated with uh, savings as well as investment. Again, the evidence for education is um, uh, less conclusive, but what was observed in the evidence that um, is available is, um, in, uh, aside from the frequency, what matters is uh, the timing of the receipt of the grants. So in a number of studies, it has been observed that uh, if the cash grants are provided just before enrollment, um, there's a significant increase, although small, in enrollment rates of children. Uh, this slide uh, shows the current payment schedule of the program. So as discussed earlier, uh, as mentioned earlier by Dr. Urbeta, the cash grant is provided to the beneficiaries bi-monthly. So the payout schedule happens every two months. Uh, we asked the beneficiaries whether they want to have um, any changes in this um, uh, current payment frequency. 
And surprisingly, uh, there's no uh, there's no strong demand among the beneficiaries to have more frequent um, payouts of cash grants. Uh, out of the 16 barangays, nine uh, said that they want the, the payment frequency to be retained, while six uh, of the barangays, they, they wanted the uh, cash grants to be uh, provided monthly to them. Okay, as for the reason for, for these two arguments, uh, those who wanted to change to monthly payout said that um, a more frequent uh, provision of cash grants would cover emergency or uh, urgent expenses. Um, they would all, it would also mean that they would um, avoid needing to take out loans to tide over the household expenses while waiting for the next provision of the grant. Um, while those uh, who said that they would like to maintain the status quo um, they said that um, uh, the bi-monthly provision would uh, would mean um, that they are receiving a larger amount compared to the monthly provision. And also a, uh, a major concern that was raised by this group of beneficiaries is that um, a more frequent provision of cash grant would mean more uh, expenses to them since uh, some of the beneficiaries need to travel to areas where they where they are able to um, access their cash grant. So in some areas, there are no ATMs, so they have to travel to um, nearby barangays or municipalities where they can withdraw and access their cash grants. So that was the concern of some of the people, uh, some of the beneficiaries who said that um, they uh, would like to maintain the status quo of grants provision. Um, we also asked the same question from the uh, program implementer side, and uh, it is uh, a common sentiment that uh, increasing the payment frequency is more doable for areas that are, or that are already using cash cards as mode of payment, since um, uh, increasing the payment frequency would also uh, have logistical uh, repercuss repercussions for areas with uh, uh, that are receiving through uh, over-the-counter means. Um, in addition to the logistical concerns, uh, another concern that was raised by the uh, key informants uh, of the program implementers is that uh, increasing the payment frequency would also incur additional costs for program operations. Uh, there are two sources of uh, this additional cost. The first one is the additional frequency also for the compliant verif uh, compliance verifi verification process that happens before the payout. So an additional frequency in the payment also means additional frequency in the compliance verification uh, in the current system. So there are additional uh, costs for that. Uh, and also another cost, uh, Another source of additional cost is the bank service fees. So to illustrate, in 2021, the bank service fees budget is 289 million. So assuming the current system, uh, there, the bank service fees will also increase if the payment frequency is um, increased. So for the payment modality, um, this is a, an illustration that shows how the cash grants are able to reach the beneficiaries. So there are two modes. There's the bank cash cards, which the beneficiaries are um, able to uh, access, uh, where the beneficiaries are able to access their grants via um, ATM or other point of, uh, point of sale merchants. And then the other mode is the over-the-counter over transaction where they receive the cash grants uh, in the form of cash and they claim it in person. So over the past few years, uh, the uh, direction of the uh, program uh, management is to move towards the conversion to cash card mode of payment from the OTC. So as you can see here in the table, the biggest jump uh, for the uh, increase in share of cash grants happened in 2019 from 56% in uh, 2018, it jumped to 86% and 
the mo most recent uh, report shows that 92.6% of the um, beneficiaries already receive their cash grants uh, through cash cards. Okay, so we asked the beneficiaries what their experience is uh, in the two modes of uh, payment. A majority of the beneficiaries uh, agree that cash card is more convenient. Uh, during the over-the-counter, uh, during days where uh, years where they were part of the over-the-counter modes, they mentioned that um, OTC mode is usually uh, less flexible with the schedule because they have to receive the grants in person. There were also more frequent delays uh, for OTC, and the waiting time is longer. Uh, although they acknowledge that the cash cards is more convenient, they also mentioned some challenges uh, based on their experience. So they mentioned that uh, they they have to queue uh, a long time, um, but uh, it's generally shorter compared to OTC. And in some instances, they need to transfer and spend for transportation to look for ATM that is online or has enough cash. Um, in some areas where there is no uh, available ATM or they cannot travel to other areas where there is uh, an ATM, what the beneficiaries usually do is go to merchants, private um, establishments with point of sale machines where they withdraw uh, their cash grants. Um, the challenge for these areas, however, is that uh, the fees that are collected by these private merchants are not um, uniform or not standardized. So a private merchant may collect higher fees compared to um, uh, compared to other merchants that are uh, farther away from a beneficiary. Okay, another challenge also is the duration of the process of card replacement or correct uh, correction of basic information in the accounts of beneficiaries. Um, according to them, uh, these processes usually take, uh, uh, sometimes take a long time. Um, they suggested that uh, to improve their experience, uh, they need to have better access to ATMs. And if they have access, um, these ATMs should also be uh, reliable, meaning they don't go off offline uh, often, uh, they have enough cash and they are not malfunctioning. Uh, the same uh, suggestions was actually um, provided by the uh, frontline workers of the DSWD. So um, among their suggestions is the provision of satellite ATMs for areas with no land bank branches, um, uh, streamlining of the processing of card replacement and change guarantee, um, and also access to real-time status of update processing and grievance resolution. So uh, what this suggestion uh, means is that uh, they would like to have uh, um, access to the real-time um, status of the updates that they request. And so they are able to provide correct and up-to-date information to the beneficiaries uh, regarding their request for, uh, for example, for card replacement or correct uh, correction of basic information. Um, regarding the topic of uh, digital financing and electronic payment facilities, uh, we asked the opinion of um, the SWD National um, uh, key, uh, key informants. And uh, they mentioned that uh, the challenge for uh, electronic payment facilities is the learning curve that the beneficiaries uh, are uh, need to overcome. So what their uh, suggestion is, instead of moving to other service providers, uh, uh, the beneficiaries can take advantage of the um, digital uh, and electronic payment facilities that the land bank is already offering. So there's no need to move to other uh, service providers. And the only thing that needs to be done is to improve the um, education uh, on uh, and financial lit literacy of the beneficiaries. Okay, so this table uh, shows the results of the analysis of the third wave impact evaluation data, um, which compares the magnitude of impact uh, according to the mode of payment of the cash grant. So to summarize, um, among the outcomes that we looked at, uh, there is no discernible impact in the uh, discernible difference in the magnitude of impact 
except for expenditures. What we observed is that um, there is positive impact on the share of food expenditures uh, for those under the over-the-counter mode of payment, while there's a positive impact on the share of non-food expenditures for those on cash card mode of payment. However, this difference um, are small and may not be robust. So, uh, but generally for all other outcomes, there is no discernible difference in the magnitude of impact between the subgroups. Okay. Um, for the online survey on the social amelioration program, um, the general finding is that the existing payment system for the four piece allowed ease by which the government disbursed the SOP money to them. So what this means is that because the, the four piece beneficiaries are already in a registry or the list is already um, uh, available in a database and they are part of an existing um, infrastructure of payment facility through their bank cash cards. It is very easy. It was very easy for the government to um, disperse the SAP money to them. Uh, for the summary and recommendations, uh, I will also go through the three aspects of uh, the research. Uh, we start with the grant amount. So to summarize, the amount of cash grants have rem remained at their nominal level starting in 2008. Up to 2016, though the real value has already decreased due to inflation, um, the only uh, recent increase happened in 2017 due to the rise subsidy and RA11301 in 2020. Uh, compared to other countries, the four piece grants are less generous, and beneficiaries are hesitant to demand increase in cash grant amounts, but they need, uh, but they admit that their budget is barely enough to cover needs. Um, for our recommendation, what we uh, would like is that for the DSW and PIDs to study the need to um, establish a principle for adjusting the grant amount that is more responsive. So, uh, uh, it, and if it is not possible, an alternative would be to um, provide supplementary interventions such as other forms of cash assistance or um, other programs that would help augment the income of the um, beneficiaries. For the frequency um, based on um, the, the research, the, the evidence is more mixed. Uh, while more frequent payments result in consumption smoothing, less frequent payments uh, result in a positive impact on savings and asset accumulation. Uh, also based on the FGDs, there is no strong demand for frequent payments among the beneficiaries that we talk to. There are cost considerations in increasing the payment frequency of the program. Um, these include the cost for operations and compliance monitoring and the cost for the bank service fees unless there are modifications in the current system that the program is doing. Um, so for our recommendation, uh, more than increasing the frequency of the payouts, uh, what is more important is the reliability and predictability of the payment schedules. Um, what we suggest for this to be achieved is that um, we ensure that the payouts are conducted timely um, and we reduce the barriers to uh, the access to the grants. Um, we also suggest improvements in the processes and IT infrastructures of both the DSWD and the land bank. Uh, if ever we would like to uh, propose changes in frequency of payment, uh, what we would suggest is to carefully examine it uh, to know if the benefits of this additional uh, of of these changes in frequency would outweigh, outweigh the additional cost in operations and uh, bank service fees. Uh, for the mode of payment. Um, we note that the payment delivery system has improved through the years, uh, primarily due to the conversion of the mode of payment to cash cards. Um, based on the analysis of the third wave impact evaluation, um, mode of payment does not create significant heterogeneity in the impact of the program, um, except for what we observed in the shares of food and non food expenditures. Um, also, uh, cash card mode of payment is more convenient than the over-the-counter mode of payment. However, there were also it, um, 
uh, reports of its uh, unique challenges, uh, including lack of access to ATMs, banks in rural areas, long process of card replacement, and gaps in the feedback loop among staff. Uh, for our recommendations, we would like the land bank or any um, authorized government depository uh, bank that would be involved in the payment system to expand the network of ATM and local bank branches in the country so that all areas, including the rural and GDA areas, are reached. Um, the land bank should also find alternative points of cash withdrawal, such as point of sale machines uh, to, co uh, to cover areas without ATMs. Um, although this is already um, being um, uh, accessed by the beneficiaries, uh, what we would like to uh, suggest is that the transactions should be also um, monitored uh, the, and the transaction fees should not be shouldered by the beneficiaries. Um, lastly, we suggest that the processes for resolving payment and cash card related grievances um, should be streamlined and um, the frontline staff should also be um, informed of the real real time status of these updates and grievances, so that they are able to communicate better um, the status of these um, process uh, uh, pending updates or grievances to the beneficiaries. Okay, that was my uh, last slide. Uh, thank you very much. I believe uh, for the open forum, Dr. Arbeta will be joining me too. Um, entertain questions, but uh, I think what follows this is the um, reaction from the discussants. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed, Dr. Orbeta, your co-author will be uh, joining us in the open forum to answer uh, questions and perhaps uh, provide more information about the study and uh, uh, the other results from your third wave uh, impact evaluation of the four P's. So thank you, Cam, for your clear and comprehensive uh, presentation. Actually, your last slide has recommendations for uh, the Land Bank of the Philippines or the LBP, no? uh, which is the Authorized Depository Bank of the four P's. Uh, we hope LBP or the Land Bank is watching this webinar. We actually invited the Land Bank as a reactor, but our effort, unfortunately, was unsuccessful. Okay, nevertheless, we have with us the Depart uh, government department in charge of the implementation of the four P's to give its comments uh, on the study's um, findings and recommendations, as well as share updates on the program enhancements that are uh, probably in the pipeline or perhaps already um, the, um, the department has already started uh, implementing. And I am talking, of course, of the Department of Social Welfare and Development or the DSWD. And representing the DSWD at this forum is Mr. Jimmy Francis uh, Schock II. He's the OIC Division Chief of the Planning, Monitoring, and Evaluation Division of the Four Ps. And uh, he has uh, represented the DSWD as a discussant in various local and international conferences involving social registries, um, social safety nets, uh, early years investment, and government to people payment system. He is an awardee of the DSWD's Gawad Huwaran for Mahuhusay Wasto at Responsable Lingkod Bayani ng DSWD and a nominee to the 2019 search for the outstanding uh, public officials and employees in the government or the Dangal Nambayan Award administered by the Civil Service Commission. Jimmy, the virtual floor is now yours. Yes, um, good afternoon to each and everyone. Um, just react if my uh, audio isn't that audible. <coughs> yes, it una, is. Una, I mean, yes. Una, we would like to express our gratitude to PIBS, to PIDS for, you know, um, um, coming up with this study, I think this is the very first um, comprehensive and, and, and comprehensive um, analysis that looked into the generosity, um, frequency, and, and the, the delivery of, of, of the cash grants and you know, of, of 4Ps. Just quick takeaways from the uh, presentation uh, delivered uh, by um, Ms. Chrisan Melad. So I, I think I will follow the same um, um, process. I know, magsisimula ako sa generosity, and then um, I will go to the frequency and and 
and the last one was um what was uh sorry so on on um it appears to us when it comes to uh, in terms the in terms of generosity what it appears to us and you know, coming from the presentation is that um, maximizing the four piece cash grants to its optimum level is uh, one course of action that uh, that the national government not only the SWD you know, can can undertake if it really wants to suppress poverty reduction because sabi nga kanina larger cash transfers uh, are associated with um uh, bigger impacts on poverty reduction especially now that um based on another PID study i think naglabas then last year ang PIDs ng isang study that estimated that there are about 1.5 million new poor households due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So, however, tama rin yung sinabi kanina that uh, may, may cost requirement ito. Ano? When, when we cover more poor households, when we go beyond the target 4.4 million households and cover the new poor households, um, there is a cost requirement uh, to that. And um, just recently, during our informal uh, uh, discussions with our count, uh, colleagues in, in MEDA, for example, we were just informed that the financial capacity uh, of the government is, is, is on the red line already and, and that the direction should be to maximize the existing uh, programs of the government and converge it all, uh, in the, in, uh, converge it all and, and focus the deliver, delivery towards the for peace beneficiary. So we agree that na kailangan i-maximize itong existing uh, pro-poor programs uh, ng, ng government. And by saying converging, by saying um, uh, linking the different uh, poverty reduction programs to the government, um, it, we believe it should be two things. Ano? One is, um, of course, yung convergence of operations. But we should be from, from even from the targeting, um, you you not only um you not only uh select the four piece beneficiaries but you also prioritize them and we are just we are pleased to share with everyone that um the different programs of of the national government say for example the tertiary education subsidy um also considers four piece as automatic beneficiaries of or among the priority beneficiaries of the test uh program and then um also in, in emergency cash transfers for example and in internal programs of dsw like the sustainable livelihood program kasama yung four piece doon sa mga uh, priority beneficiaries and more recently itong social amelioration program when it was first uh, rolled out last year and the target was 18 million households kasama rin automatic beneficiaries ang four piece so don so, so targeting sa of the implement ng programs, um, that is what we mean by converging the operations and of different poverty reduction programs. You know? um, converging in terms of policies, it all it, it, it's it's all um, all together. And the second way to converge is converging the resources. You know? not only yung operationalization of different programs, but basically converging the resources of the different uh, government agencies and. We are also pleased to share with everyone that in the SWD, we are pushing for this, what we call the C4 piece or convergence for four piece budget reform that um, in essence um, 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 gathers all the different um, um, implementing agencies, uh, especially the members of the four piece National Advisory Council to uh, apportion no, uh, certain of, of their budget towards four piece beneficiaries. And all of these things, ginagaw ito ng four-piece project management office, ano? Um, ginag, uh, all of these things are being harmonized through um, what we call as uh, the social case management, meaning uh, maximizing, mobilizing all resources out there and partners out there, different stakeholders, um, process all these so that the beneficiaries will be able to maximize this. And yan yung um, parang focus ng DSWD right now, ano? To really, um, 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 to really steer you know, the, 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 the different programs um, all towards the, the beneficiary, beneficiaries. So, hindi man mapagbigyan, kumbaga, yung hindi man maging generous in terms of the cash transfers coming from 
four piece program alone, but it can be still generous by maximizing the cash assistance and the different programs within the SWD and outside the SWD. And if I may add as well, even the private sector, may mga ongoing na kaming, uh, engagements with them. Um, the key is really just to, you know, um, ano ba, to, to, um, to uh, improve the, to scale up no, the, the efforts that we are doing. And second, take, take away din namin coming from what was presented earlier is that um, um, another program aspect that uh, really drives the uh, impact of four piece is, is the reliability no? and, and predictability of the cash grant receipt. Kasi nga naman, even if we, you know, increase the cash grant amount to, to its optimum level, pero wala namang assurance that um, matatanggap on time and in correct amounts yung cash grant, then you still forfeit the, you know, the, the intention to be as generous as, um, if the, oh, generous in terms of the amounts of cash grant. So, um, the DSWD and the members of the National Advisory Council um, is, is presently uh, um, um, pursuing agenda to, to, well, to saturate the provision of, uh, sorry, not, NAC, no, not the NAC members, but in partnership with Land Bank, to saturate the provision of, of the more efficient cash cards. <coughs> and we are also... For now, in terms of frequency, we are uh, maintaining the current by monthly payments. Um, I think that is what is the most doable uh, in, 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 in based on our experience for the last, um, say, um, for the last few years. Ito yung nag works na by monthly payouts. Um, in as much as we want to increase you know, the cash, the, the frequency of delivering the payments, there are costs, you know. And um, for DSWD, we are only, especially for four piece, we are only uh, capped at 10% uh, overhead cost. So the more frequent payouts kasi require more um, overhead cost, no? more bank service fees that we that we uh, allocate. Ano? And, and, and in, uh, unfortunately, we cannot be generous about it ano? because of the 10% cap by the uh, the, the legislators as the uh, as uh, during the budget uh, deliberations and um we also agree that we should shift uh, the attention to to ensuring you know, that the beneficiaries are actually receiving the cash grants on time and in correct amounts and along this line you know, we are presently uh, pursuing uh, amending the the our memorandum of agreement uh, implementing rules and regulation or the moa irr with the Land Bank of the Philippines on payment delivery with the objective uh, to expedite, for example, card production, card replacement, and resolution of other banking issues, such as, for example, uh, the issues on uh, offline ATMs that is um, um, less than, the, if I'm not mistaken, the, the threshold is 95% na dapat online of that uh, online um, most of the time, ano, ang, ang isang, uh, um, ang, ang mga ATM facilities ano, are set by the BSP. And um, also yung absence of um, ATMs in coastal municipalities in Region 2 and Region Mimaropa. There are still areas that um, may cash card holders na nga yung mga beneficiaries but they cannot re uh, readily uh, withdraw their cash grants because of um, inavailability of ATMs in those areas. And we also support yung, we also agree na magkaroon din ng parang on-site, uh, parang ano ba ang tawag dyan, um, accessible, ano, more accessible to the beneficiaries yung kanilang cash grant. More, uh, if they want, you know, by, by just using their phone, they can already access or they can uh, check no, their their uh, accounts. Ano. And second, uh, initiative along that line is presently we're also uh, in partnership with PLCs, we're also rolling out our initiative to uh, utilize the TLCs, um, the advantage of that um, in terms of uh, uh, ensuring that um, uh, the frequency is maintained. No? Uh, Nangabawasan kasi yung, mini, yung no, uh, KYC procedures. 
um, once we are able to link up with PSA, instead of requiring the beneficiaries to produce so much um, identification cards, like for example, when they open accounts or when they replace accounts kasi nawala, uh, by linking up with PhilSys, I think mabawasan significantly yung know your customer procedures or the KYC procedures and therefore expedite card processing. We're also pleased to share with everyone, ano, and I think this is my last takeaway muna for now, ano, that DSWD is trying to expedite the shift to transaction accounts. Sabihin, when it's transaction accounts, the beneficiaries can already use that accounts, not just a conduit for, for peace pit grants, but it can already be used to you know, transact with, um, or it can be used by other programs as well and government services. They just have to, um, DS, uh, DSW just have to uh, provide the account number. Say, for example, in times of calamities, the cash, uh, pag may mga humanitarian organizations, for example, or other government agencies that will provide cash transfer assistance, such as emergency cash transfers during um, emergencies, you will just have to provide these account numbers and automatically Land Bank uh, will you know, wire these cash transfers to their account so they can immediately receive. So that is one of the um, advantages of coming up with transaction accounts. Meron na bang parang commingling? It's no longer just for four piece, but it can be used as well by other uh, in, in delivering uh, payments coming from other poverty reduction programs or social assistance programs. Uh, not just within the SWD, even um, outside, uh, even coming from different uh, NGAs. You know. But um, while the SWD is already doing the social preparation you know, um, on the demand side, big sabihin, we are preparing the beneficiaries already in terms of you know um, uh, financial literacy. In fact, we just released a new uh, comprehensive module on, on, on financial literacy. Um, we can do only as much on our part to prepare the demand side, but um, I see meron tayong, ano, may din tayong discussion from BSP. Ang isa rin sigurong um, parang um, um, on, on, on the supply side ba, no? uh, we were hoping that BSP uh, has also to facilitate the utility of transaction accounts. Kasi for now, based on uh, 2019, I think, financial inclusion survey, seven out of ten Filipinos are unbanked and even suggesting a higher number among the poor households. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, we are um, the fifth in the ASEAN na maraming unbanked Philippine, unbanked, unbanked uh, individuals. And um, 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 even suggesting a higher uh, uh, figure no, among the poor households. So what we are really suggesting to BSP is to improve the utility of, of the transaction accounts by attracting more preference, for example, towards using, um, say, digital payments you know, and um, designing more financial products and services that are responsive you know, to the needs of the consumers, especially the poor. Because even if we, you know, um, we continuously educate the poor, you know, the poor piece beneficiaries in, in um, um, how to make, maximize their cash cards, even if we convert all cash cards or, or convert all modes of payment from over-the-counter to cash cards. Karina pinakita ni Ms. Chris and Melad na 97% of work is ang cash card holders. Even if we uh, increase it to 100%, even if we convert them all to transaction accounts, but if the, you know, the, 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 environment by which these transaction accounts can be maximized um, is, is not conducive or is not attractive to the beneficiaries, especially the poor, then uh, that is something also that uh, can, can, you know, uh, uh, can, can derail the, ano ba ang the, the impact of that. So I think, I think these, those are the three uh, quick takeaways uh, from our side, from BSWD and once again, maraming salamat sa PIDs, um, sa, sa comprehensive na analysis na ginawa. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jimmy. Um, very important points uh, you underscored about uh, 
uh, the need to pursue a convergence of operations and, and resources, um, and also to um, ensure the reliability and predictability of uh, the receipt of the cash grants. No, by the way, I have some questions for you, which we received on on Facebook on the beneficiary uh, selection process of the program. No, so but you can respond to those questions during the question and answer. Okay. Um, Okay, moving on. Uh, good financial management is a skill that's essential for the for peace beneficiaries to um, ensure that they are using their cash grants uh, wisely, meaning for its intended uh, purpose, and that they are also saving or investing it. Um, although we've heard from Cam's presentation that only a, a few a small number of grantees are able to save or use part of their um, cash grants for business or long-term investments. No? And it is for this reason, and this was also underscored by, uh, by Jimmy in, in his comments. Um, um, it's for this reason that we invited the Banco Central ng Pilipinas to this forum as a reactor. Okay? Um, the BSP has various financial education initiatives that teach uh, the basics of investing, proper use of credit, um, management of income, and some of these initiatives are conducted or being conducted in partnership with the DSWD. Okay. And we are honored to have uh, with us Ms. Sara Padilla, the Acting Deputy Director of BSP's Economic and Financial Learning Office, which implements multi-stakeholder partnerships that aim to uplift the, um, the overall financial health of Filipinos. Prior to joining the BSP, she spent more than a decade with the Philippine Stock Exchange advocating financial literacy among various stock market participants. Director Padilla, the, the virtual uh, floor is now yours. Thank you, Mak Sheila, and thank you both to our colleagues from DSWD and also and PIDS. Um, maraming salamat din po sa ating mga authors. I think congratulations are in order for this very comprehensive study. Ma'am Chris Ann Melad, Ma'am Nina Victoria Arauz, and of course, uh, Mr. Aniceto Arbeta. Maraming salamat po for inviting us. And thank you po for this opportunity to share our reaction and comments for this uh, very important study, which examines the implementation and impact of our four piece program. Uh, I've written down po uh, our comments and reactions just to make sure that we would be on time. So we think po that the findings from the study can be very useful in contextualizing and improving the content and delivery of the financial literacy modules during the family development sessions or FDS. Clearly, there is a need for an intensified financial literacy program among four piece beneficiaries, given the small number of grantees who are able to save and use part or part of their cash grants for business or livelihood or long-term investments. The study also shows that beneficiaries are hesitant to demand increase in grants amount, but admit that their budget is barely enough to cover needs. So parang hindi ko nila alam how much they need talaga. So baka po, this would give us an insight that baka kailangan natin strengthen yung financial planning skills nila. This study gives us an idea about what topics to emphasize po, particularly for our four-piece audience. The BSP has been in partnership with the DSWD, in particular with the 4 Peace National Program Management Office, to include a financial literacy module in the FDS conducted for those participating in the SLPs or the Sustainable Livelihood Program under the 4 Peace. Together, we have created content and conducted several master training of trainers for SLP trainers in all 17 regions from 2013 to 2016. Nitong 2020 and 2021 naman po, the BSP provided inputs and supported the launch of DSWD's Financial Literacy Manual and conducted capacity building sessions for its pool of trainers who will roll this out to the beneficiaries during the FDS. In April 2021, po, the DSWD released its guidelines on the implementation of transaction accounts, which mandates all household beneficiaries to undergo the financial literacy program under the FDS over their seven years stint under 4Ps. Through this, kami po ay maasa that we look for going to see improvements in the financial literacy and financial capability levels of our four piece beneficiaries. Yung financial literacy manual po na ginagamit sa mga FDS sessions ay naglalaman ng iba't ibang lessons 
<clears throat> kagaya po ng financial planning, saving, budgeting, microcredit, microinsurance, investing, including po ang pagsiset up ng small businesses and pag-explore ng employment opportunities to improve the resiliency and financial security of our beneficiaries. The DSWD also started delivering online FDS or yung tinatawag po nila na EFDS para po ma-expand ang kanilang reach because through social media, mas madali po natin mapalagana pang ating uh, financial education messages. Easily shareable din po ang ating mga materials. And uh, the DSWD for Peace program have been successful naman po. If you visit their page, marami po silang viewers sa kanilang mga EFDS sessions. Account ownership serves as a gateway for financial inclusion. The BSP fully supports the directive to convert cash cards to transaction accounts as this will allow beneficiaries to access formal financial services para po sa kanilang pagsisave, pag-access ng utang, o kaya naman po ay pagtanggap immediately ng cash aid kaya po nang nangyari nitong pandemia. At the height of this pandemic, the BSP provided technical assistance to GSWD in the implementation of account-based distribution of the SAP second tranche, allowing beneficiaries to receive cash relief at the time when they needed it the most. This enabled the cash assistance distribution to newly opened accounts of more than and 7 million SAP beneficiaries with six financial service providers. As beneficiaries transition from using cash cards to transaction accounts and with increasing access to more complex financial products and services, the need for financial education and consumer protection through digital financial literacy initiatives becomes more apparent. Thus, the BSP also supports supplementary interventions to encourage grantees to be self-sustaining and ensure that they do not take on unnecessary financial risks and avoid falling victims to frauds and scams. This will complement the financial literacy manual content which already covers topics such as understanding transaction accounts, digital literacy, fraud and scam prevention, financial consumer protection which also includes effective recourse yung pagre-request po ng assistance sa ating mga financial institutions kapag sila po ay may problema or kapag halimbawa po nagkaroon sila ng aberya sa kanilang um, online uh, sa kanilang mga uh, transaction accounts so including po yung pagre-raise ng kanilang grievances or complaints so dapat po ang ating beneficiaries ay pinapansin ng lahat ng mga financial institutions and our beneficiaries should know that they could actually raise their complaints sa BSP kapag sila po ay hindi pinapansin ng mga BSP supervised financial institutions. Ang BSP po ay meron consumer assistance mechanism. Meron po kaming tinatawag na chatbot na ang pangalan po ay Bob, the BSP online body na ma-access po ng ninuman ng lahat po through web chat, through Facebook Messenger, or through SMS. In parallel, in parallel with these efforts to improve financial education for the unbanked and underbanked, the BSP is also intensifying its financial education partnership programs to target our rural beneficiaries together with our other government agencies. So, kagaya po ito ng DABFAR and ACPC. We are also very happy to share that the Department of Education has at long last issued a policy mandating the integration of financial education in the basic education system. Nilabas po nila ito noong June 3 ngayong taon. This would ensure the sustained delivery of foundational knowledge on money management para po sa ating mga kabataan for the Filipino youth. The BSP also continues to enforce financial consumer protection measures to help increase the people's trust and confidence in the digital financial services and the financial system in general. Despite the pandemic po, ang BSP ay tuloy-tuloy po na nagtatrabaho on multiple strategic programs for financial inclusion to achieve our targets under the DPTR or the Digital Payments Transformation Road Roadmap, which aims to have 70% of Filipinos with formal transaction accounts and to digitize at least 50% of the total volume of retail payments by 2023. With all of these, these are all aligned po with the intent of the National Strategy for Financial Inclusion or NSFI. And we are mindful that the numbers only matter if they truly make a positive change in the lives of our kababayans. Kagaya nga po ng aming laging sinasabi, ang financial inclusion po is not an end in itself, but it's, it's only a means to achieve broader aspirations para po sa ating mga kababayan for them to have financially healthy and comfortable lifestyles. But ito po ay napaka-importante, 
very crucial because being financially included reminds our people that they belong in the society, that they are seen, and that they matter. In closing, Paul, we just want to convey that the BSP will continue to support the DSWD in this program, and we are hopeful that the implementation of transaction accounts and the institutionalization of financial digital literacy and the enhancements that may be implemented can empower more corpus beneficiaries and that will be able to see further improvements sa kanila pong well-being. Maraming maraming salamat po sa PIBS and to our DSWD colleagues. Ma'am Sheila? And thank you very much, um, Deputy Director um, Sara Padilla of the BSP. We are very pleased to know about the, uh, the programs of uh, the BSP um, to promote uh, financial inclusion. We will hear more from um, um, Director Padilla during the open forum as there are some questions uh, directed to her. Uh, but um, in the meantime, um, let, let us uh, have a short break. Okay, so I, I think it's been some time since uh, 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 we had a poll. Um, meron tayo usually uh, poll, parang mini contest natin dito sa ating uh, webinar series. So let's uh, have um, another one for this um, it's a webinar, no? So for those in, in WebEx, what we will do is we will randomly uh, pick two names from among those who will answer the question correctly, okay? Meanwhile, yun naman pong nasa Facebook, so paunahan kung sino pong dalu uh, dalawang makakapagbigay ng tamang sagot ay aming declare na winner. And the winners, all the winners, all four winners, uh, two from Facebook and two from Webex will get a uh, PIDS notebook. Okay, so I think uh, ready na ba kayo sa ating uh, poll for uh, this webinar? Okay, so ito po yung ating poll um, question. Please be ready with your answer because we will close the poll after 10 seconds. Okay, so simula 2020, magkano ang cash grants para sa education or education na ibinibigay sa mga four piece beneficiaries Ito po ba ay A, 300 pesos bawat bata na nasa elementarya, 400 pesos bawat bata na nasa junior high school, at 500 pesos bawat bata na nasa senior high school. Or B, 300 bawat bata na nasa elementary, 500 pesos bawat bata na nasa uh, junior high school, at 700 bawat bata na nasa senior high school. Or ito po ba ay C, 300 bawat bata na nasa elementary, 500 uh, bawat bata na nasa junior high school at 800 bawat bata na nasa senior high school. Okay, so pwede na po yung uh, itype ang inyong sagot. Okay, so we will give you only 10 seconds. Okay. Okay, um, kasagot po kayo dun sa poll, hindi po dun sa chat box. Okay. So I think we can now close um, the poll, Gwen. And um, pwede na natin i-flash, Gwen, ang, um, ang outcome, ang result ng ating poll. Are we ready? Sa resulta ng ating poll? Okay, ang tama pong sagot ay letter B. At meron pong 32 WebEx participants ang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. At mula po sa 32 na yon ay pipili po kami randomly ng dalawang winner at sila po ay magwawagi ng ating prize na PIDS notebook. At mamaya ay i-announce natin kung sino po yung dalawang winners na yon pati na rin yung nanalo po na ating Facebook, dalawang Facebook viewers. Okay? So, maraming salamat. Thank you very much for uh, participating in our uh, poll. And so, at this point, I now invite our uh, speakers for the open forum. So, Ms. Chris Annelad, Mr. Jimmy Shaw, and Director Sara Padilla, and of course, our President, Dr. Aniseto Orbeta, who uh, co-authored the study with CAM, will also join us in the open forum. Okay. So, um, we have uh, a number of questions already, but perhaps, Jimmy, if I may, um, um, okay, if I may throw you the first question, actually, this question is something that we have 
received numerous numerous times on Facebook when we um promoted this uh, webinar uh yung for for the registration of this uh of of uh, para mag-register yung ating mga participants for this webinar. So we have received a lot of questions asking about how they join for peace and how are the beneficiaries selected. Actually, may mga comments din dun sa chat box insinuating that the process is gamed or manipulated by barangay officials or those in the LGUs. Okay. Uh, Jenny, could you clarify this? Uh, maaari ba sabihin mo sa mga nanonood sa atin kung paano sila mag-join, ano yung selection process, at uh, paki-clarify kasi nga ang nasa isip ng maraming tao ay game yung or manipulated yung beneficiary selection process. Yes, um, thank you. Um, two, two questions ata. Ano? Yung unang tanong ay kung paano sila makapasok sa program. Yes. Um, kung ano yung proseso ng pagpipili ng, benefici ng beneficiaries ng program. Um, DSWD po ang nag enumerate uh, nagpupunta-punta sa mga sambahayan para interview sila ay ma-interview at yun po ay pinoproseso ng DSWD para malaman, ma-identify sino yung mga, benef mga sambahayan na eligible, sino mga sambahayan na may hirap at may 0 to 18 years old na anak. So yan po lahat ay pinoproseso ng DSWD. In fact, um, just recently, I think since 2019 ano, to 2020 at may spillover na ngayon nga this year, we were doing the, um, we were updating the listahanan, mm -hmm. that is uh, the instrument, the, the assessment tool that we are using in identifying who and where the poor are. Um, um, we are targeted to uh, update our beneficiaries ano, using the latest set of uh, poor households coming from the listahanan. Para naman sa mga hindi naka um, who wanted to formally report, no, to, for example, they wanted to be part, uh, they want to formally report, they can uh, channel it through our grievance redress system or the GRS. Uh, they can send email to forpeaceassistance at bswd.gov.ph and or or send a text to 0918-912-2813. Just type for peace space then their message. So in fact, um, itong pandemic talaga lumaki ng lumaki yung um, inclusion request and you cannot blame the situation because many people were really you know became jobless. Uh, became hunger during the pandemic and one of the programs that they were thinking that they can maximize or they can run to is for peace. So, yun ang unang sagot para sa unang tanong. Yung pangalawa, yung... Oh, Shini, yung, uh, yung, if I may hold your thought uh, for a moment, you said for peace assistance at, tama? DS, at D S W D. .gov.ph So, yun ang pwedeng gamitin na email para uh, makipag-ugnayan sa inyo kung gusto nilang ganun ba? Yes, kung kung gusto nilang makapasok kasi yan na yung makapasok. Amin. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Kasi maraming nanonood sa atin ngayon actually ng mga um mga nagnanais na mag-member ng ng for peace. Okay. Sige. Sorry, sorry for cutting you. Yes, it's okay. Um, yung pangalawa, but then again, do, uh, those things, yan po ay dadaan pa rin sa proseso. Ano? What is important mm -hmm. is, we have an idea who these people are and where they are okay. na request sa, sa program, na makapasok sa programs. For the second question na gained yung, ano, yung, yung um, targeting, ano? first, I think, kailangan din namin emphasize siguro that there is no perfect targeting system in any cash transfer program in the world, ano? Um, meron at meron talagang mga um, occasional incidences that happen, say, uh, may mga barangays, for example, who are um, um, influencing to some extent. Um, there, as I said, there is no perfect targeting system. What is really essential is to minimize those um, gaps, kumbaga, in terms mm -hmm. of targeting. Um, itong mga enumerators na finifield ng DSWD to our listahan and assessment, uh, most of the, uh, these are people who are not coming from, uh, these are people outsourced by BSWD 
that are not ne necessarily coming from that specific area. So, for example, uh, these are enumerators coming from another area who are deployed to a specific municipality to somehow preserve then the the, ano ba, the objectivity of, of the targeting assessment. And aside from that, meron ding verification process. Like, for example, hindi ibig sabihin porket meron ng um, list of, ano ba ang tawag dyan, poor, no? Na, na, na generate mm -hmm. SWD. Before we finalize that, yan po ay pinopost din sa public. So that, mm -hmm. again, sa mga areas na, like, paaralan, sa barangay, so that they can check on the initial results and they can file grievance as well. So, maaring sabihin na natin mayroon talagang occasional incidences na naging uh, in influence, for example, because that was the the report, ano, in influence mm -hmm. na barangay, for example. Tapos, in effect, instead na poor, naging non-poor or vice versa. So, the people, the general public can check those lists ano, and, and question and report it so that if necessary, pwedeng mariassess yung household to, to challenge ano, the, the initial data. So, marami pang um, mechanisms on, on, on marami yung mga mechanisms sa listahan ng assessment that, um, that um, essentially validates ano, the, the list of poor households first before we, ano, before DSWD, before listahan and uses it to, um, for, for different poverty reduction programs. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat din, Jimmy. Um, may, may katanungan tayo dito from uh, Marla uh, Torres. Um, I'm not sure how accurate is this. Sabi niya, given that approximately 85% of Porky's beneficiaries are women, does the program follow a gender targeting framework? Yes, meron kaming gender participation framework, if I'm not mistaken, or gender... Um, um, there... I sh we cannot really say it's a conscious targeting no na meron mm -hmm. ang preferential my preference ang program for women it's just that um during the registration the households are the, the women are are registering themselves as the grantee yes as the grantee also international evidences also of different cash transfer programs ano lumalabas na mas magaling nga talaga magmanage ng <laughs> mga babae versus men ano in in CCT among CCT families ano and mukhang ganun din ang ang track sa Philippines ano mas maraming babae yung nagiging grantees okay. Thank you very much uh Jimmy we have other questions here and uh, if I may uh, refer this to uh Dr. Um, Orbeta or Cam. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, there, this is a question from Ronel uh, Del Rio of Batangas Province. No? Um, what are the significant changes the researchers notice in the economic conditions of the beneficiaries? Actually, it doesn't really relate to, to this study, but to your, um, your uh, bigger um, third wave uh, impact evaluation. Uh -huh. Um, Dr. Orbeta, would you like to tell us um, yeah, about I like what you found also, like from your third come, week? like to come to rest for the more difficult questions. Okay, come. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'll, 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 I'll answer this. I'll answer this for come. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, economic conditions is, is, uh, is a broad term. So let me just try to break down the results of the, of the third wave evaluation. Uh, like... Uh, you can start with education. Education in the impact on education attendance that's, uh, is not seen in the, uh, in the elementary level because we are all near universal there. It's very difficult to see the difference. But we see a higher attendance for, for older children uh, in high school and senior high school. So that's, that's so attendance is, is, is higher. And uh, of course, we have. Uh, uh, we have uh, impact on, on health access to health services. It's also positive. It does, it, it, I'm just trying to define what economic is because that's a very broad term. Yes, and yes. Uh, we see that there is a higher household expenditures uh, in general and, and, and higher expenditures on education and, cloth and clothing and footwear, for instance. And uh, there's um, uh, the other um, thing that you can mention is that there's lower celebrated poverty as well as lower incidence of hunger. Uh, for purpose mm -hmm. so that, that those are some of the breakdowns of you can say as include as 
uh, impact of, of the program among, uh, among the beneficiaries. So that, those are the, the banner uh, results and there are, are other details, but that, that, that's the general result that we, that, that, that's why we, uh, uh, until now, we, the program is delivering on the promise of keeping the children in school and healthy. So mm. it's, it's, that's, that's, that's the main message that we are trying to, there are uh, uh, some uh, 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 other details of, the, of that result, but that's the general message that we want to convey uh, given the, the, the uh, third wave evaluation. Yeah, I, I know that answers the questions. Uh, that, that, that. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arbeta. There is a, um, a follow-up question from the same person, and uh, I, I, this pertains to, I, I think, still the third wave, no? How are families with PWD accounted uh, for in the research? Uh, meron ba kayong disaggregation na ginawa when it comes to the impact of the 40s? Have you go down to that level, sir? Tom, uh, I, I don't think uh, yeah, so unfortunately, we didn't do any disaggregation uh, of impact uh, that are specific mm -hmm. to um, PWD households um, so far in the studies, uh, including the third wave. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Cam and Dr. Orbeta. Let me jump to another question. Um, okay. Uh, Hold on. Okay, from this is from Asterio Olandria. And actually, sabi niya, this is for Ma'am uh, Cam. <laughs> In your summary, um, uh, the four-piece program of the, of, in the Philippines is less generous as compared to other countries. Can you give more details? What are the characteristics of these other countries? Are they of similar state to pH? Well, um, Mr. Olandria, we, if, uh, we, would, we can refer you to slide 12. I think that that was slide 12, uh, Cam, and wherein you compare the generosity level of uh, the four Ps with uh, South South and Central American countries, no? Uh, yes. Uh, the countries uh, included in that graph uh, by Acosta and Velarde actually include Ecuador, Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, Peru, and um, Colombia. So, okay, it's being shown. Yeah, this is the one, yeah. Yeah, ang um, tanong is, um, Oh, parang ang inaano niya is comparable ba daw yung mga countries na, na ito? Some are, are richer than us. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, in general, some like uh, it's, uh, Braz what, Brazil. Brazil. And, uh, yeah. Mexico, perhaps. But uh, around uh, not very uh, country called the per capita incomes of these uh, countries now. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Doctor. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's Is the that ratio. Added? That's the ratio to their uh, uh, consumption, right? Uh, um, the grants uh, uh, as a ratio to the cons total uh, consumption. Yes, of the households. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we can jump to another question. Uh, um, this one is from, um, okay, let me check our chat box. From uh, Maria Lord Lourdes Mendoza, um, did you probe on how, how the grant is actually used? And what is the typical diet? Let's say, what is the typical diet of beneficiaries? How do they use the education subsidy, uh, Wi-Fi connectivity? Uh, do we have data on that? Uh, or probably Jimmy, being uh, someone who's uh, really from the program, can, can help us also answer this. Uh, can I start the yes, discussion? Yes, um, Cam, yeah. Hi. 
Um, earlier, I showed a word cloud that shows the um, uh, the expenditure items that uh, were reported by the beneficiaries during the FGDs. And majority of the ben beneficiaries uh, report that they mainly use the cash grants for, for school expenses, specifically mm -hmm. projects and um, allowance of um, uh, the, the, the children who are attending school. Um, in terms of the uh, diet of beneficiaries, uh, we also covered this in the third wave impact evaluation, uh, not in this study. Um, okay. uh, so uh, what we did there is to compare the dietary diversity of uh, uh, children in the third wave impact evaluation. And um, what was observed is an increase in the consumption of vegetables. Um, what we, uh, what, uh, we, we tried to um, explain this by uh, the promotion of the Gulayan sa Barangay that is uh, a part of the um, activities of the four piece beneficiaries. But um, for other items uh, such as protein rich um, food items, there is no um, uh, significant difference for four piece and non four piece. Thank you, Tam. Uh, would you like to add? Uh that a uh, doctor or beta or um jimmy no comes no more de details of that Can't add to <laughs> jimmy would you like to add anything uh, sorry uh, we have the same findings we're also conducting um external spot checks in four piece um every now and then that is one question that is um a constant that is among the constant questions that we keep asking every year. And the, it, it's, it's the same, no? so, the, the cash grants are going, are being spent on food, on education, uh, primarily. Okay. Thank you, Jimmy. Okay, uh, we have a question here uh, for uh, Director Sara. Is it possible, and this one is from Ronel uh, Del Rio okay um of batangas is it possible for the circulars of bst on uh, uh pwd specifically to visually impaired on opening a bank account to be accessible or is it possible for bsp to direct the banks to not deny blind and visually impaired to deny uh, blind and visually impaired people to open bank accounts are there any specific cir circulars or issuances on this matter ma'am Thank you, Ms. Sheila. Um, I think the question is from Sir Michael. I actually already pasted my answer in the chat box. A copy yes, of the memorandum circular issued by the BS people that they uh, yes. they are being reminded yes. not to uh, not to uh, practice uh, anything that's discriminatory to our uh, PWDs. Thank you, Ma'am Sarah. Thank you for thank you for that. Okay. Let's entertain more questions. Uh, okay, and this one is from um, Maria Angeles Catello. Okay, does the SWD have a tra tracer study on 40s recipients' children's education, especially those in high school or those who were assisted to finish high school? Were they able to proceed to college or tech book or find employment? Jimmy? Or is this something that you think Dr. Orbeta and Kang can, can pursue? Yes, sa, sa level namin sa DSWD, we do not have yet um, um, technically a, a, a tracer study no? um, on what happens to after they, they graduate from high school. Kasi hanggang doon for now yung um, design ng four piece um, to, to allow high, uh, kids to reach 19 years old or or high school or graduate from high school but perhaps um our colleagues from kids can say something yeah I, Dr. I, I, Dr. I, I, that's, that's one of the, th the things that we have in mind actually uh, doing but but because the program is uh, how many years already but what we are doing uh, like tracing not just the but tracing those who have supposedly graduated out of the program is uh, another one uh, that's uh, on the pipeline. What we are doing is uh, uh, currently is long-term impact uh, using uh, wave one uh, 
uh, with one sample uh, on on, uh, but not mostly on on health impacts because that's uh, the critical inputs during children childhood are known to be very uh, potent in terms of affecting long term health. Uh, so that's what we are trying to. And the other one that we are uh, tracing using that sample is whether uh, starting at the right age, because the program uh, encouraged children to be in school, uh, starting at the right age also means that they will finish more schooling. Uh, uh, because the hypothesis mm -hmm. is that when you start late, you will be bullied in school as a uh, uh, big boy uh, and you are still in grade one. So basically that's the idea that uh, uh, the benefit of the program that encourages children to be in school at, at the right age uh, will encourage them to finish uh, more years of schooling. So that, that's the other thing that we have uh, uh, that we have studied. And, from, and, and we found promising results. It's, all, it's in one of the uh, other research uh, report that we have. Thank you, Dr. Arbeta. Okay, Kang, would you like would you like to add anything or uh, yes? Okay, let's move no, to no, uh, okay. Let's move to uh, another question, and this one is from Bino. And perhaps uh, you can answer this because this um, Jimmy, because this refers to the uh, operations of uh, the parties itself. No, what kinds of penalties are meted to recipients who violate guidelines? Are there recipients who are removed from the program? May mga instances na bang ganito yung uh, non-compliance? Oh, let's say, for example, yung uh, uh, attendance to the uh, family development sessions. Uh, ano ba yung kailangang attendance jaan? Uh, uh, parang narinig ko uh, uh, up to three, parang may quota hanggang three. Uh, tapos kung laging absent. Pag, pag ganun ba, meron yung ano? Is, is there a deduction in the cash grant? Pag hindi, hindi fully nakaka-attend sa yes. mga ganito. Yes. Uh, yung yung non-compliance uh, yung uh, yung non-compliance ang immediate if, uh, ang immediate uh, impact niyan sa household ay wala siyang matatanggap no because the cash grants are conditional to the to how yes. they fully comply with the condition so yun ang immediate mawawalan sila ng cash grant now in cases na successive na yung non-compliance for example and there are cases din na hindi naman agad ang approach ng DSWD is to delist them Hindi, hindi ganun ka punitive yung um, approach ng DSWD. In fact, we are using case management ka as a helping process to enable households to you know, to comply back to the conditions of the program. Now, in the event na talagang wala na talaga, I mean, na-exhaust na lahat ng helping approaches ng DSWD, that is the time would we apply uh, our, I think, Memorandum Circular 6, if I'm not mistaken, on the um uh, providing sanctions for perennial non-compliance to conditions and may mga uh, sanctions doon uh, uh, depending sa nature of non-compliance for example okay thank you for that um uh, jimmy okay let's move to other questions let me check our um uh, chat box no um Okay. Okay, let's go back to the chat box. I like to check our Facebook page kung merong mga tanong po dito. Okay. Um Okay. Okay. And another question from Maria Lourdes Mendoza, uh, what undesirable activities which are related to forties happen on the ground? Which program in, uh, implementers should effectively address? Uh, I'm not sure what she means by undesirable activities, but um, Jimmy, you may want to uh, um, try answering this question based on uh, what you have seen on the ground. Yes. Um 
we are documenting this ano this this reports ano ito if 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 the question is about grievances then as mm -hmm. i as mentioned early on there's a grievance address system that captures these complaints and second um resolves the issues um and 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 um, there are many typologies of complaints that the grievance that the four pieces is receiving one pertains to payment uh there's also <coughs> card related there are also issues about um say um the de delivery of, of of the health services no walang doctor saradong facility wala ang libro things like that and all of those things uh go through the grs route so that uh, proper uh, actors can be involved in resolving these issues miss mendoza um qualified uh what um uh, specified what undesirable activities mean and she said, loan sharks taking advantage of beneficiaries. Um, yung iba dyan, I think parang uh, nagsasanla ata ng cash cards din nila. Parang ginagawa din ito ng iba dun sa kanilang uh, SSS or, di ba? Nagsasanla and then, yeah. Or mm -hmm. also fixers offering services so that beneficiaries are not inconvenienced in getting the cash uh, grant. Okay. Yes, um, so on the part of DSWD, as I mentioned, there is really a case management you know, that, that, that ensures that the household are, um, um, are able to comply with the conditions um, and, and they are able to follow the guidelines of the program such as yung, the cash cards to be with them should not be pawned. You know? The position of the program is that yung cash, yung cash card ay nasa beneficiaries. In fact, meron, during FDS, for example, there are areas that... Um, Parte ng FDS may master price check if the cash cards are with them. Or do we not also deny that there may be, again, cases where these are really happening. Ano? And in fact, kapag sa mga ganitong, ano, ganitong instances na talagang nandoon na sa loan shark, that is the time the LGUs are already involved. Ano? Because mm -hmm. this is outside the ambit already of DSWD. I think uh, the, best, uh, the best strategies that work on the ground is when they uh, when when DSWD involves the LGUs um so that the LCs the local chief executives can issue for example um yung mga example namin sa baba, for example may mga resolutions na release yung yung uh, council yung city council reprimanding loan sharks sanctioning them if they find out na there are um cases like this ano so that the cash cards will really <laughs> go back to the beneficiaries Okay, thank you, Jamie. Okay, we have um a question here from and and per, and, and perhaps uh, um director Sarah can answer this. Although I think you've already covered this in your presentation, you, you may want to give examples. Does BSP have any program on financial literacy which is tailor fit uh to the poor or to the marginalized sector? One that takes into consideration the unique profile of the poor. Director Sara, thank you po for the question, Ma Maria Lourdes. Uh, I gave an example earlier. Po, we have a financial education program together with uh, DA Bifar, uh, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, and ACPC, Agricultural Credit Policy Council, for small fishers and farmers. Po, is it customized for them? The answer po is yes. We have a sample of our financial education work as well as our financial education materials po on the BSP website. And ginawa po namin for our small fishers and farmers. We have come up with a financial education game ang tawag po ay fish and learn ang nauna pong nailabas ay para sa ating mga fishers uh, you could take a look at how the game is structured at kung paano po siya um, uh, nilalaro ng ating mga fishers which are participants so doon po sa game na yon they are uh, faced with different life events and sila po ay mamimili ng iba't ibang meron po mga decision points na maaari nilang pagpilian meron po silang play money because some decisions cost them more versus others and at the end of the game magkakaalaman po kung sino sa kanila ang naka-attain ng kanilang objectives. Dahil sa start ng game po, meron po silang mga layunin or gold card po na mamimili sila 
na gusto nilang ma- makamit na layunin. And we, we will check at the end of the game kung sino po ang nakapag-abot, ng, nakaabot ng kanilang uh, naiset po na layunin. So that's an example of a uh, fin-ed material that we have customized po para sa ating mga fishers. Just to share also the BSP approach to financial education is really through strategic partnerships. That's why we partner with government agencies po. Nakikipag-partner kami, halimbawa po sa DAB PAR and ACPC. And to make sure na meron po silang pool of trainers na aming matitrain. We, uh, together with our other partners also, we, we come up with a training material, training guide po, or training manual, as well as yung uh, learning materials, learning videos, or in this case po, yung materials po para sa game. Uh, kasama po yung aming uh, private sector uh, partner also to fund those materials. Tinitrain po namin ang ating mga trainers and binibigyan ng ganitong mga tools na magagamit po nila once they roll out the game or once they roll out the training po sa beneficiary. So CBSP po trains the trainers and the trainers of our partner agencies train the beneficiaries. So, ganun po ang aming approach to financial education. You could also take a look at our other materials po, kasama naman ang aming ibang partner agencies. Uh, medyo marami-rami po. We have uh, DepEd, for example. We have for our uh, civil servants with the CSC, with our uniform personnel, AFP, BFP, and PNP, and uh, marami pa pong iba. OWA also. So, we have... Um, a lot of government agencies po nakapartner namin dito. The materials for all, for all our partnerships could be viewed po sa BSV website, bsv.gov.ph. They are free po. You could access them, download them. Um, learning materials, uh, training manuals, including the videos po, you could use them. And just cite BSV as a source. Nasa website po ng BSV ito. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din, Director Sarah. Actually, she has a follow-up question about programs for the four piece beneficiaries and you have answered this in your remarks you mentioned that you helped develop a uh, financial literacy module for the um, fds right family with development DSWD. yes with dswd yes, well. Uh, the DSWD for that uh, Finlit manual is also in partnership with the USAID po in coming up with that uh, comprehensive manual. So, nag-contribute po kami ng contents wherein we have expertise, we have something con- to contribute. So, for example, um, uh, in in financial education topics and consumer protection po na topics, um, uh, you could uh, siguro download also that manual po para makita ninyo yung uh, laman na yun. But that really is designed for our four-piece beneficiaries. And uh, so, nag-training of trainers din po ang ating, uh, ating DSWD colleagues, yung kanilang trainers po. Uh, na, Nag-TOT nitong October lang and those trainers are expected to roll out po itong Finlit manual sa kanilang sa mga four-piece beneficiaries sa kanilang mga regions po. Okay. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that comprehensive uh, explanation on, uh, you know, the various uh, fin- financial literacy program being offered, being um, organized, offered by uh, uh, the DSP in collaboration with other um, agencies. Maraming salamat, uh, Director Sara. Okay, let's check other questions. We still have time to uh, entertain uh, uh, more questions. Uh, Perhaps um, if we go back to the presentation of Cam. Um, Cam, you mentioned uh, something related to, I, I think it was in your slide 33, wherein you said that if a grant adjustment is not really possible, and this was, I think, seconded by by, by Jamie. He said that, um, okay, given the financial situation of the country, so he offered other alternatives instead of, you know, um, increasing the grant, then we can just look at, um, you know, um, pursuing conversions of operation of uh, services and resources. And 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 come, you mentioned that if the grant adjustment cannot really be made, supplementary interventions can be pursued. Uh, what do you think? And uh, what are these supplementary supplementary um, interventions that uh, you you and Doctor Arbeta have in mind? That, that should be, you know, considered. Dr. Orbeta, yeah, so, would you like to... Uh, uh, sorry, Cam. I'm, I'm sorry. Cam, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, it has already been mentioned by Jimmy earlier during his um, reaction to the presentation that uh, there are a lot of um, 
uh, programs that are part of their conversion strategy that uh, aim to provide supplementa supplementary interventions to the uh, for peace beneficiaries. So, uh, for example, uh, we have the Sustainable Livelihood Program um, that uh, mm -hmm. provides okay. uh, employment assistance as well as a seed capital fund for um, uh, self-employment opportunities. Uh, aside from the uh, programs of the DSWD, we are also um, aware of uh, uh, other programs at the LGU level as well as so social insurance from um, uh, other agencies of the government. Uh, so we, we, when we made the recommendation, we uh, were uh, referring to the existing programs that okay. uh, we have already. Thank you very much for that, uh, Dr. Ardeta. You were you you are the yes. principal investigator uh, as well of the SLP the study. Yes. It just to, to provide a background for the uh, global literature on, on dealing with poverty. The one that works with uh, 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 poverty, real pe poor people, is a multi-intervention program. It includes uh, health insurance, consumption subsidy, uh, uh, asset transfer, coaching, and, and, and uh, coaching for... So basically, you cover all the risk that the poor faces. So that's why uh, uh, lending doesn't work for the poor because they will uh, because they may not know how to you to, to use uh, the money. So essentially, I'm answering other questions that like why don't you just do livelihood instead of cash transfer? Yeah, cash is the most efficient in the sense that you don't need to know what the families need. For instance, you provide in livelihood if they don't know how to make use of the money. It will just be money down the drain. So livelihood works for people who are prepared who can make money productive. Okay. So that's 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 uh, for the very poor. You need everything to cover. You have to cover them. You have to cover them with 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 uh, consumption big consumption uh, uh, subsidy because once they're the they they have problems with consumption, these asset that you will transfer, they will just sell it. That's why. The, but so and you. They may not be trained to make assets productive. That's why you need a coaching besides mm -hmm. training them how to make assets productive. So coaching. So that's why you, they, they, that's called the graduation program in, in the literature. That's the one that works mm -hmm. for the poor because it, what that programs it works because it covers everything that the poor uh, is facing. Uh, risk of the, when they get sick, they have health insurance essentially. So because if you get sick, if you don't have money, you sell the asset that was given to you. That there goes your program essentially. So mm -hmm. basically, that's the only thing that works in the literature in helping the poor. It's a very con uh, coordinated or Jim uh, calls it convergence of efforts. That's why we say we already have these programs in many of why don't we just mm -hmm. coordinate all of them into covering all the risks that the poor are facing in order for for them to 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 get out of poverty. So essentially, so the, the assumption and there are a lot of assumptions about. Uh, about independent interventions, uh, like mm -hmm. as I said, livelihood. You assume that people can make productive the money, and they are not facing other risks, but they do. That's that's what the poor is. Uh, are they're, not, they're facing a lot of, of risks, uh, including health of their children or all, all that. So that basically what the what poor people is trying to do is that, given all these risks that they are facing, the education and the health which is the future of these children, will not be at risk. So basically, they're trying to protect these children from, 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 not, uh, from uh, not being sent to school because they don't have the money. Essentially, that's, that's because you're already uh, uh, putting at risk the future of these children. So that's the, what the purpose, what the purpose is trying to do. There are a lot of problems in, 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 in the implementation of large programs like this. Course. But but that's the this theory of for peace. Even with the risk, even with the hardships that the families are facing, we are protecting the children from being out of school because that mm -hmm. will consign them to a life. That's what we call intergenerational uh, cutting the intergenerational transfer of poverty. That's that's what the, the problem is trying to. It's not actually creating livelihood. This is another program for providing livelihood like SLP. SLP. It's also targeting for peace because so that 
uh, while they're in the program, they will develop their, their, their uh, abilities to manage small projects and become sustainable uh, households, essentially. So that's the, that's the idea of, of that. So as I've said, in the global literature, the only thing that works for the very poor is a very is, is concentrate and several strong inter, several interventions at the same time and and on, on the poor. That's the only way you can you can help them out because they are facing just so many risks that solution to one will not be uh, will not move them out of poverty. So it's, it's, that's, that's the idea of of what uh, our colleague Kam is is trying to to say. The, the, the the theory behind all, all, all of that that's why all the recommendations that we put in there that we already have this program so why don't we just concentrate them so that we can uh, really move people out of poverty rather than uh, rely on one one uh, uh, intervention that assumes a certain thing this will not be true for all poor people right for example livelihood uh, i think the poor will will benefit from employment rather than livelihood you know what kind of risks people doing business are facing every day. You can just ask a, a fish vendor, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. in what kind of risk is a fish facing? You assume that everyone has that kind of risk stamina. I, I don't think we mm -hmm. have that. People have different uh, temperament in terms of, of, of in terms of, of their of their way of to, to, to live their lives. So cash is very important because you don't have to know what there are because they can whatever is their need they can use cash in anything and it's also easy to you can just imagine like for example the debate about when when the rice was given uh, there was a debate why don't you give rice to the you know the logistical nightmare of giving rice to to four to to, to, to four million families it's not that it's not that easy uh, that's 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 what i'm saying uh, cash is very efficient and, and, mm -hmm. and of course, only in cases where the market will not work, it's not working like, for example, in disasters, where there's no more market, then cash will not work because they can't buy anything. That's where you use goods. That's very, very good goods. But where markets are working in, and in, you can buy things, cash is still the, I think the, the uh, literature mm -hmm. is telling us cash is still the best. And in, in, uh, just to just to answer some of the questions I see in, 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 mm -hmm. in, the, in the chat. Thank you, Dr. Erbeta. Uh, speaking of convergence, um, perhaps what is missing is uh, um, an explanation on, on how these different social protection programs uh, are related to each other. You know, looking looking at all of them um, and how they play out. Like, kasi ang nangyayari kasi is parang we look at them in isolation. So that's why people are asking, okay, so after ng ano paano naman yung livelihood, okay, while in fact, into, in, uh, in reality, DSWD has a program on, li on livelihood for, for, for the poor, which is the Sustainable Livelihood Program, SLP. And then I saw a question um, on the chat box, oh, I, I think it's... That's, that's, uh, that's a good point. Uh, let me just try to answer that. Why don't you just give free education? Uh, we can't even provide education to the poor and we're giving everyone free when, every, when some, some people are actually willing to pay for education. So that's, 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 uh, that's what I Some people are willing to pay for education. They've been sent there. Even if there's public school, they went to private school. So, uh, giving everyone the same thing means that, may mean that there's nothing going to the poor. Because they are, they, they are not in the position to avail of us. So, uh, so I, I think, yeah, that's, that's what I'm po pointing out, Sheila, that uh, in, in, in dealing with the poor, the, 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 world, the, the literature is saying that you have to do a, a multi. So uh, uh, like, for example, as you're saying already that uh, the uh, for Kalis for poor peace, there is, there was an, uh, uh, an anti uh, uh, college program is now become TAS. 
Uh, yes. That's the, the, that uh, TS is targeted for the poor. I hope that that, that you are checking with that really the, because that's uh, that was supposed to support them for college. That was a, there was a predecessor program that evaluated that was working. That uh, that, that, that can, they, they can use that, but you you try to give everyone college. Mm -mm. So where do you mm -mm. get the money? Where so that program that you were that program that you were. That program yes. that you were saying before that uh, that's really intended for the poor piece that was already scrapped and then uh, no it was moved to, it, yes. tertiary uh, education subsidy. it was it moved to the tertiary education subsidy education which is subsidy. taking it was in tertiary education subsidy that was the, the 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 that's where the program was moved i uh, hope that that's still implemented that way so because, because mm -hmm. that, that's, that's the intention that was the the mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, yes uh, so that, that was the 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 idea of, of, of the of the of the program uh, so and but as i said going back to the we we have to really realize that helping the poor cannot be piecemeal so the idea of disability of a convergence program of all we have we have many programs actually the That's programs right. and, and and gather them together and because we have to understand what kind of risk that do the poor face every day uh, and, and and address all of that so that you can help them move out of that if you you fail to address some of the risk the program will fail as, as you have as you have seen in here and anywhere else uh, in, in, in the world that a, a singular intervention will not work it will work for some who are prepared mm -hmm. like example the credit program it works for some are, are able to make money productive but what about for people who doesn't have the skill to make money productive it will fail so it's, it's the basically that's that's the that's so understanding what the risks of the, the poor and their capable mm -hmm. capabilities are is very important uh in that's terms right. of addressing uh, uh, or helping them uh, so that's essentially what i I would like to say that what's the literature teaching us? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Arbeta, since you're already there, um, we have a question here from Dina Marinke, and I, I think we covered this in uh, our uh, February webinar uh, on the uh, third wave, uh, in third wave in impact evaluation of the four piece. And this is about the universal basic income, the UBI. And mm -hmm. Adino is asking if uh, do, you, do you think this it's feasible to be implemented in in the Philippines? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I think my thoughts that it's, it's, it's the same thing as the uh, so long as we know where we get the money. Is <laughs> uh, that's really the the question? Uh, yeah, that, that's that's the. Uh, I think the, the the proponents of that is thinking of a very fast phase very fast phase uh, technological change mm -hmm. uh, wherein people will be left behind so mm -hmm. the way to protect uh, them is to provide a floor uh, for their yes income. social protection so floor so, 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 so uh, a floor for them that regardless of what happens in the because the, the way the, the technology and, and development is, is unfolding is that it's very much uh, favors the able and the educated, which are basically mm -hmm. the richer ones. Yes. The richer yes. ones. So that's basically. So when you have that kind of a system, then uh, you leave a lot of people behind. Behind. Mm -hmm. They are not they are able to participate, or uh, they are not prepared to participate, and all of that. So that's why the UBI is. is so this is what what we are. Uh, if we can just arrange, that's a very nice idea. If we can just mm -hmm. think of where we get the money and how we are going it's always the 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 the, the devil they say is always in the is in the details of that that's a good idea essentially for mm -hmm. uh, when you conceive an idea that we're a very fast transforming uh, system economy leaving much the uh, the unprepared behind uh, mm -hmm. and the, uh, only limiting some very few for instance so that's 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 that i think the 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 background of that kind of concept so it's a very good idea you just have to think about how to implement it because it's not it's not one uh, first thing that you have to to solve this where do we get the money to uh, we just remember we're just we just have a problem of four million households multiply but but to 25 million households that we have that you have to assure uh, uh, 
uh, an income, for instance. Uh, mm -hmm. So, or, or or just if you, it depends upon what what kind of uh, floor do you do you do you put in. These are very big decisions because that means money. You raise it. Uh, you, as, as Jamie has mentioned, uh, you will uh, you will multiply your financial issues. So, so basically, I, I I don't have I don't have problems with that so long as we can think of uh, the details of implementing the word. How do you get it? What what will happen to is it on top of what we have already have or it will erase all our or our pro we will uh, er uh, uh, replace all our programs with just one like floor, for instance. And, uh, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and who, how do you determine uh, uh, who will get uh, a subsidy and, and who will not get a subsidy. So that, that, those are things that has to be mm -hmm. decided and, and, and need, need, need a lot of, uh, 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 of, of study uh, to be able to mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, figure out uh, right. how you mm -hmm. implement, implement that. And in, in a country like the Philippines where majority of the population still, you know, marami pa rin uh, mahirap, uh, so yeah. are you saying that more targeted interventions are are better? Yeah, in the in in, in, in at, at the current scene, are, like for example, we have just just imagine the problem we had with SAP. Mm -hmm. uh, trying everyone almost we need uh, we targeted 18 million uh, and only 4 million is certain because 4 million is four piece. How do you identify the other 14 million is a very big problem. Uh, and, and how do you deliver the money to the, to, the four, to the 14 million is a very big problem. So that's that's the kind of problem that logistical sense ideas are very good. But when you talk about onto the details about, about uh, implementing it, uh, we have to really sit down and, and study it because that's got, uh, those things are, are not. Like for example, the idea of giving everyone a sack of rice is a very good idea, but can you think about the logistical nightmare of, 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 of providing that? Just ask this WD what kind of logistical nightmare they face every time there is a, there is a uh, calamity, for instance. Uh, so that, 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 that's, that's what I'm thinking about there. Uh, we have to think through about our, our, our good ideas because sometimes they are not too easy to to implement and the thing that we think that will help the poor, we're actually not, it's not helping the poor. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's what uh, happens so, yeah, and, and uh, unfortunately. And we have mm -hmm. to be very, 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 very uh, uh, discerning into, into what are the motivations of people and, uh, to, and how to use those motivations to their benefit, for instance, mm -hmm. or the capacities as well. Uh, very well said, Dr. Orbeta. Yes. Okay. Um, most of the questions in the chat box, I think we've already covered them. Some of them, uh, some of, uh, you know, the minor ones, you can, you can find the answers in the presentation. So at this point, to cap our uh, discussion, may I ask our speakers, uh, each of our speakers from some brief uh, uh, final remarks. Okay, ikuli ko na si Dr. Urbeta Chikasika. May we start from uh, uh, Jimmy, followed by uh, Director Sara, then um, um, Cam, and of course, last but not the least, si Dr. Urbeta. Jimmy, would you have any final remarks for our uh, audience? Yes, um, uh, well, I, I think first, um, I would like to thank again, um, Tids, ano, for um, coming up with uh, first, uh, the first of its kind na uh, ganito kalalim na analysis and payments. I think what we can really um, um, commit to here is we will um, go back to our drawing boards and, you know, make use of the recommendations um, uh, uh, coming from this um, study. Um, all for the these are all no, to to make sure that the program is really uh, delivering you know, is is really uh, able to fulfill its its objectives you know, and all for the poor beneficiaries that we are 
serving. So on, on the part of our audience, you know, sa mga partners ng parties who are listening to us right now, especially the beneficiaries, um, um, makakasiguro kayo sa patuloy na na patuloy na uh, suporta ng ng gobyerno ng 4P sa inyo at pagtitibayin pa namin yung mga uh, ang implementation implementation nito para sa mas uh, mas mas makatulong pa ito. So, maraming salamat. Maraming salamat din Jenny at uh, maaari ba akong humabol ng isa pang tanong mula sa ating Facebook uh, one of our Facebook viewers, uh, this is a very uh, relevant question from Pamela Diaz Manalo. How is school attendance monitored in the absence of face-to-face -face classroom instruction? Have the con conditionalities changed during the pandemic? Uh, yes, we uh, actually worked with uh, both Department of Education and Department of yes. Health. We are, the four pieces adjusting to existing protocols of DepEd and DOH. So, first thing I would like to clarify, uh, the conditions are still being monitored. Tinig na namin yung um, condition, uh, uh, ang unconditional na pagbibigay ng kasigan. I think it only ran for a few periods. Then we resumed the conditions again because it improved na ulit ang, ang lockdowns. Um, for for education, for that specific question, ang pag-monitor ng education conditions ngayon is through, again, the, the, the compliance data will be coming from the Department of Education, from the teachers. We are mm -hmm. observing yung mga different modalities nila in delivering education, like for example, yung mga blended learnings, um, yung mga virtual classes, all of those things serve as the attendance in lieu of physical attendance to school of mm -hmm. children. Also. Closure of schools. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jimmy. No? Um, okay, let's, um, and, and of course, thank you once again for um, attending our forum. At uh, salamat sa um, pag-clarify mo ng uh, 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 yung beneficiary selection process at saka yung mga issues na natanggap namin sa Facebook. At of course, yung mga katanungan na natanggap natin ngayon dito sa, ano, sa ating webinar. Okay, let's move on to Director uh, Sara Padilla. Director Padilla, would you have any final remarks, ma'am? Thank you, po, Ms. Sheila. Um, same with Sir Jimmy, we're thankful po sa PIDS for inviting us in this forum. Uh, maraming salamat din po sa lahat ng mga participants na nakinig and sa insights from DSWD. Um, rest assured po that the PSP will continue to support this program to push forward our financial education, consumer protection, and financial inclusion uh, agenda. Malayo-layo pa po ang ating paglalakbay at hindi ho naman madali yung ating kinakaharap ng problema. Kaya po kailangan po talaga ng pakikipagtulungan ng maraming stakeholders Po para magkaroon tayo ng usad. But we are very hopeful because we know that we are planting the right seeds po para maabot ang ating objectives. Thank you very much everyone and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And thank you very much then, Director Sara. Hi, Cam. Thank you for presenting your study. Would you have anything to say as your final remarks to our audience? Um, siguro as a final um, um, remark uh, for, for the presentation, I I would just like to reiterate that the experience of the beneficiaries very much depend on the available um, infrastructure that determines their access to these formal financial institutions as well as ATMs. And I'm very, very happy to hear that um, the that DSWD has um, um, taken uh, note of the observations in the study and have already started doing um, uh, things to address these issues that we found on the ground. Um, also, very appreciative of the BSP for um, uh, discussing and sharing to us the their program on uh, financial literacy because I think that's a very um, um, important aspect, especially that uh, we're trying to um, uh, also think of interventions uh, towards the graduation of some of uh, the beneficiaries that we have in the program for how many years already. So I guess that's it for my final uh, message. Thank you very much, uh, Cam. Indeed, it is uh, very laudable of uh, of uh, the BSP and, and, and the DSWD because um, may, mar may mga ginagawa na silang ano, mga measures no? uh, para ma-address yung mga um, uh, issues at 
pati yung mga recommendations, they were, DSWD is very receptive to your uh, recommendations. So, maraming salamat sa ating partner agencies. And of course, Dr. Arbeta, sir. Okay. Any uh, final words? Yes. Yeah, just like, uh, so this is general, much more general than what Kam was saying. So, uh, I think our, uh, the Institute is very much uh, interested in learning from our programs. So, that's, that, that's why we do these things. Uh, not just from our intentions or designs, because uh, usually our intentions or designs are good. Mm -hmm. But uh, we need to know what actually happens. Uh, intentions are not things that happen on the ground. Uh, or our designs not also happens on the ground. So we need to check and use data to inform us about uh, our weaknesses of our programs or whether our intentions are valid or not. And implementation, and, 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 and finally the results. And we'd like to know these results. And uh, after knowing the results, we should use these results to refine our programs. That's the final objective of all of this. That's a cycle of of learning. So that's what the what we try to do at the institute. So uh, I hope we we uh, you have fine this afternoon, and we thank you for sharing your afternoon with us uh, and sharing your thoughts uh, about the issue at hand. Uh, uh, this is how we educate each other. Uh, we have, we have, we don't presume to have monopoly of the of knowledge. Uh, so we value your your reaction and your points of views about our programs, uh, and so that we can use that to to improve uh, our programs. That's essentially what we are all are interested in. That our programs are more effective. It really addresses the issues that that the country is facing. So we can uh, help a country. Uh, develop so that's that's what what we 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 want and we all want and that's uh, what supposed to be the institute is doing and then thank you again thank you for being with us this afternoon and sharing your thoughts and uh, keep it coming uh, in the next uh, uh, public seminar of ideas thank you very much thank you very much Dr Odetta so friends please join me in thanking uh, Miss uh, Chris Anella Dr Odetta for uh, sharing their study with us. Um, in our discussions, uh, Mr. Jimmy Shock of uh, the SWD and Deputy Director Sara Padilla of DSP for their valuable insights. Let us give all of them a big uh, virtual clap. Okay, we hope that uh, this webinar is, has been enlightening to all of you as it has been to us. Um, before we finally close, I would like to announce the winners the four winners of our poll who will each receive a PIDS notebook. And our winners are from Webex, Christine Siana Vera Verano, uh, Christine Siana Verano, and Victor Aguilan. And then from Facebook, uh, we have by Osmenia Hajiali, by Osmenia Hajiali, and Lenny Mentigar III. So, you all won in our web in our post uh, for this webinar and our our uh, team will contact you for your price so maraming salamat po and uh, before we finally close uh we have some announcements okay so you can access all the presentations from today's uh, webinar from the pids website uh from our seminar page and also we have the link to the full study so you can download the full study from our website as well and uh, please regularly follow uh, our website uh, okay before that our um, survey our feedback survey help us improve our web uh, webinars by answering our survey uh, we will email you the link after the event and um, please um, we need your suggestions so we can improve our webinars and please regularly visit our website and social uh, media uh, pages. Marapi pong salamat sa lahat ng tumutok sa amin sa ating uh, Facebook account uh, at, at uh, nakinig or um, who followed our, the live tweets of our webinar on Twitter. And for our remaining webinars this November, on November 11, we have, uh, we will discuss about the the results of the 2019 National ICT Household Survey on November 18. We will have our topic is on the health impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic in the Philippines. And on November 25, we will have a discussion on the Philippines' performance in meeting the ASEAN Economic Community Vision 2025. 
And finally, we would like to thank, um, we'd like to acknowledge the various organizations from the government, academe, uh, civil society, business, and international development community who join us today. So you can see the names of those institutions on the screen. And uh, so this concludes our webinar for this week. Also, so stay safe, stay healthy, and stay informed too. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of, of your day. So see you next week. Bye-bye.